Hey guys, this is Lord Polished Edge. Thank you for joining me in my workshop today. So I'm sharpening a few kitchen knives today and I did promise a customer that I would show her how to strop her knives on a leather strop. So what I have here is the Gen D 210 by 70 mm leather strop. This is cow hide with the rough side out. So we're gonna sharpen this knife up and I'll show you step by step how I go through the stropping process. We will also check out the performance of the knife before and after stropping. So let's get into it. Start sharpening the knife first. Preferably and ideally, this should replace the honing steel in your kitchen, okay? It's not hard to use, it's not too expensive, and these things last a really long time. The difference is the performance that you get from your knife after all of that is significantly better, okay? If you watch some of those butcher videos, you'll notice that they'll steal a knife, do like three or four cuts, and they'll steal it again because the knife doesn't cut as well. Now, if you're stropping, if you sharpen the knife properly and then you strop the knife properly, then that edge could actually last you an entire day's service without too much trouble. Uh, in certain cases, your knife might actually not feel as sharp, especially if you're dealing with uh, raw meats because the fats are sticking to the edge. In which case, you know, I mean, just wash your blade. All right, all right, so what is the strop? Essentially, this is a piece of leather that's mounted to an acrylic base and we put some compound on it so the leather acts like a substrate. And we do this to clean off your knife's edge. All right, so as you sharpen your knife or use your knife, you'll form a burr. And the best way to remove that burr is actually to use a straw. So back in the day, the barbers, before they put on a shave, they'd actually pull a piece of leather taut and they would strop their razor blade on it before they shave. Now, the problem with that is, if you don't pull the leather taut enough, or if you're pressing too hard with your knife hand, the leather is gonna actually curve around the edge and you're rounding the edge, dulling it in the process. So the best way that I find to avoid that problem is to mount it on something hard in the first place, in which case, if you are to press a little bit too hard, which you shouldn't, uh, chances of the leather rolling around the edge is significantly reduced, and there's no chance that this thing can be slack again because it's already mounted. Okay, next, let's talk about the motions of stropping a blade. Now generally there are two types of motions that a blade would have in relation to the abrasive that you're working with. Uh, the first one will be trailing edge, it's where the edge trails behind the rest of the blade as it moves, like this. Okay, so they call it a trailing edge again because the edge trails behind the blade as it moves. Now the other one is what we call leading edge, this is where the edge leads the way, alright, so it leads the blade in the front, like that. Now, if you're sharpening on something hard like a stone, leading edge like this, it's probably the best way to go. Uh, that kind of motion actually helps reduce the burr buildup or the burr formation in your edge, and you'd still be able to apex your edge regardless. But if you're working on something soft like a strop, a leather strop, and you did a leading edge, what's gonna happen is you're gonna cut into the leather, in which case you'll be coming back and buying more of these from you. Now, if you're careful, chances are you won't have to replace your leather strop for many, many, many years, okay? So the proper way for a leather strop is to do a trailing edge like that. Now, of course, it's easier said than done, and I have actually seen a lot of people make the mistake of uh, accidentally doing a leading edge, or on their return pass, they don't lift the blade high enough, or they lower the blade a little bit too soon, and they catch the side of the strop, and, and basically they just cut it up, which, in, in which case, you know, your, your strop will last more than a week. So be mindful, do it slowly, and be careful when you're stropping. All right, next, let's talk about how to find the proper angle for your knife. Now, if you can just see that there's a shadow beneath the edge right there, I'm gonna tilt the blade forward until the shadow is completely gone. Kind of about, right about there. Okay, so this is going to be your angle as you strop it. Now, is there a possibility that you will increase the angle by too much and still not notice? Yes, which is why you should always back it all the way until you see a slight shadow, kind of like there, and you tilt it forward a little bit more until the shadow is gone. Okay, this is just to ensure that you are not over or under angle. All right, so let's talk about counting our motions. So if I say 10 passes per side, what I mean is I'm going to strop on one side 10 times and the other side 10 times. So it is 10 passes per side. So if the knife has quite a big burr, like you're fresh off a stone, you can start at 10 passes per side, go down to eight, 
uh, passes per side, six passes per side, uh, three passes per side, two passes per side. And then when you reach one pass per side, you'll do that eight times. So that's one, two, three, until you reach eight. Okay, this is the deburring process to clean the edge and make sure you've got a nice good edge. Of course, when you're at the end of this process, if you've held it at the right angle, you won't be able to feel a burr, but you might want to inspect your work. If there's a burr, you'd feel it, in which case you might have to repeat the stropping process. Ultimately, you could use a piece of paper or magazine paper or even newsprint to do a knife sharpness test to see if you've removed all the burr or if you've actually apexed the knife in the first place and that's just by cutting a piece of paper. Now this knife isn't cutting particularly well. Uh, I was hoping for it to do worse, but it seems that I didn't form much of a burr. Good job me. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna strop it and you'll see a difference afterwards. That is not cutting well at all. It feels rough, it's catching in places. It's not really cutting very well. It's not that the knife is an apex, the knife is apex, it's just that there's still a burr, which is why we use the straw. Okay? So let's just demonstrate the before and after. Just to demonstrate. That's a huge difference in terms of performance as it is. It's cutting smoother. You can even kind of hear it. I'm not sure if the video picks it up. But you're definitely getting better cuts. And that is just from stropping for, I don't know, a minute or two. All right, so we're pretty much done. I've uh, sharpened and stropped all the knives. And let's just see how the blade performs. Now, I love Japanese uh, kitchen knives. Their carbon steel is just amazing. We've got a cleaver here. It's got Japan written there and I think kanji. I'm not familiar with the knife, but it does cut pretty well. Alright, so there you go. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys found this video informative and useful. Don't forget to give us that like and subscribe. We truly appreciate it. Thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your friends as well. You know, if they're knife nuts or they're professionals who want to make sure that their knives are always sharp and in tip-top working condition, uh, they might be able to benefit from knowing how to actually strop and maintain their knives properly. Anyways, you guys stay safe and stay sharp. I will catch you guys in the next video.